All right, so this is a quick video overview of the um, Alpha, I guess, V0.1 of SP Tools. So I wanted to just kind of get it out there so people can start using it, and I'm likely to change stuff, but I, this is just kind of act as a quick crash course to get your head around the different things it can do and how to go about using it. So uh, once you install it, if you come to the extras here and open this SP Tools overview, you'll get this page here, or this patch, rather. Along the top, we've got all these um, different tabs. Here you can see all the abstractions. Um, these will open up the help file. So if you click on one of them, it'll bring up the help file for it. Um, and each one will have a whole bunch of different you know, examples and all that. You can see the full list of them here. Um, but fundamentally, it's, I, I guess, uh, a library that's a culmination of the last few years of stuff that I've been doing where it's basically machine learning tools for drums and percussion, just kind of really optimized for low latency, solid real-time performance. Um, there's some definitions down here at the bottom, so depending on your knowledge level, that might be useful. But uh, for this video, I just want to kind of walk you through these first tabs, um, show you what it does, how to use it, and then, you know, we'll go from there. So at the core of the library is like really tight, really fast, really optimized onset detection. So you've got audio coming in, um, and this is, you know, it can track really, really, really well. It's made to work with, um, the sensory percussion hardware or regular contact mic triggers or any air microphone. Um, you feed audio into it and then out of it you'll get a bang, a trigger, and a gate. So um, that's quite useful for depending on, well, I'll show examples of stuff. You can also tweak the sensitivity, um, you know, here and the threshold and all that. Um, and then here's just a musical example. So these tabs at the top are kind of like greatest hits from the help files. The help files for each of these objects has more information and more examples. So here I'm using the trigger output of SP onset, and then using that to open the audio um, to let a short moment of audio from the snare through, and using that to uh, trigger a car plus strong algorithm. So you can hear the tracking is really fast. And here we're using the actual audio from the snare to trigger um, the actual impulse that gets the algorithm going. There's also some other descriptor stuff in here, which I, I won't get into on this tab. But when we move on to the next one, um, there's a whole bunch of different descriptors you can analyze for. So there's sp.descriptors, um, and this one will give you a mix of loudness, centroid, uh, spectral flatness, and pitch. And you can see the numbers down here. Um, oops. Um, so these are the numbers coming out, visualize it there. Um, there's a few other descriptors, objects, MFCCs, Malbans, um, but you know, again, this is just kind of an overview. You can see the full list of the descriptor based ones down here. And then here's a, just a quick little musical example. So here I'm using um, a sample from some cage piano piece, and I'm using uh, different audio descriptors to control aspects of the playback. So this will just reverse the direction whenever there's an onset. It's kind of cool, it's like a little scrubber thing. This one will jump up or down at octaves depending on the amplitude, um, above a certain threshold and below a certain threshold. This one will jump around um, based on, uh, I think, spectral flatness, and you can apply kind of uh, envelope from this here. So here I'm essentially playing back this sample, um, but from you know, the audio input and just using the descriptors to jump around and shuffle it in a kind of interesting musical way, I think. Okay, um, one of the core ideas here is that sometimes you need, uh, all these ideas so far are based on like onset descriptors. So when there's an attack, you want to analyze the descriptors from that one attack, that one little window. So uh, when you want that to all coincide for different things, there's these frame objects. So SP onset frame, um, that which you can then connect to descriptors frame, Melband frames, and MFCC frames. And all of that means is when I put all of this together, all of these uh, descriptors that are coming out of here correspond to the same uh, moment in time, the same analysis window. So this is really useful if you're doing, as I'll show in some other examples, different processes where I know that for this moment, this was the Melbands, this was the descriptors, and this was the MFCCs. So these are the frame-based ones. And here's a quick example where I'm just using Jongli, again, some descriptors, 
um, to basically make a, kind of a drum sound, but using uh, jungly. All right, so that's kind of fine and dandy. So that's the kind of descriptor stuff. Now here we have classification. So if you're familiar with sensory percussion stuff, this is uh, the core sensory percussion software, what it does. Um, classification is, I guess in SP lingo is zones, when you're training a zone. So here I'm gonna hit the, the learn button. Um, I can select the thing, so the center, play the center of the drum. Then I'll select the edge of the drum. I think this is cross stick. No, that's rim tip, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I've trained a few things, and now when I play audio back into it, you can see it's telling me that's the center of the drum, and then the edge, and then the next one I, I think is rim tip, but I trained it as um, cross stick. So you can see that works there. So this is useful and to be able to play back samples based on that. So here I have a, a training that I've done ahead of time. So I've done this. You can print it out to see what you've done. Um, you can write this to, to disk so your training can get staved. So I've loaded one here. Um, I've loaded some hang drum samples here. Here you can see which, uh, you know, all the training that I've done. So when I play this back. I'm playing back different uh, hang drum samples based on the, the training that I've done here. So that's classification. So this is sort of like the core, like these two objects here will do the core uh, sensory percussion thing. Now beyond that, I want us to go to something further. So with a lot of the stuff that I do, I'm using a lot of sounds that I, I don't wanna take the time to um, train specific, like, oh, th this is my rim tip, this is the shoulder, you know, the, here's the shell. I wanna just be able to play a bit and have it um, automatically pull stuff out. So um, what this does, I'm just gonna put this to play here while I explain, is that you feed it a bunch of audio. So I'm, I'm using cluster train here and I'm just giving it um, a recording here, but this would be, let's say, you playing your drum. Um, the idea is that here you would use your setup, like the, the kind of thing that you're gonna be doing. I've got my snare, I've got some cortales on it, I've got, you know, little brushes, sticks, mallets, whatever it is. You just basically play for a while. And you can see a counter here of the amount of stuff that, you know, that I've been playing. So I've done that for a bit. And now let's say, I wanna say, that was five kinds of things I did. I'm just gonna pick a number here. So I kind of hit on the, the sort of the skin. I had some metal objects. There was some kind of longer sounds, some bingy sounds or whatever. I'm gonna hit five. And what it does, it takes all of those things and it, it clusters them into the, the five most related things. Or I can say two. Or eight. Um, or whatever. You, you can pick however many clusters you want. And then like before, you can print this or you can write it to disk, save it for later. Um, now this is very useful because you could then use this to do other stuff. So um, here I have that class match thing, which is what I use for classification. But here, rather than using it to play back an individual sample, what I'm gonna do is depending on the cluster that I've matched. So this is the, the same audio that you just done, heard here. I did three clusters, so I have sort of three types of things. And when I'm feeding the stuff into it, depending on the class that's matched, so which cluster it was, it's gonna do one of three very different processes. So this one in the middle is the car plus strong example from that I showed a moment ago. This one is a, a, a funky synth example from uh, one of the other help files. And this one is a corpus based sampler stuff, which I'll show in the next tabs. But you'll see them light up as I do it. So whenever there's audio coming in, So it's kind of interesting that whatever the uh, the class that is matched, it can do a whole completely separate process. So here I'm doing three completely separate patches, basically. So you can do whatever you want with what with the cluster. So moving on, um, the next stuff is corpus-based analysis. Um, so here you kind of pick and you load up a folder of samples. I'll just pick a very small one here. <coughs> It'll take a moment to run through it. Um, depending on the speed of your computer and you know if you have OBS running and other stuff this should go quicker but it'll analyze every file in the folder for a ton of stuff um, at multiple time windows and when it's done it'll plot that out for you so here's all of the results 
Um, I can view them there, I can save this to disk, and that's all cool because then I can use these and I can play back stuff. So if you've seen um, the, the corpus-based <laughs> sampler video that I've done um, or the teaser video that I've done for this package, you'll hear a bunch of this. The idea is that you load a bunch of folder, like a bunch of samples, you know, thousands, dozens, whatever you want. Um, then once you have them loaded, rather than training by classes like the sensory percussion style, or doing clusters like I just showed a couple times ago, you literally just use the audio descriptors from your what you're playing. So if it's louder, or if it's brighter, or if it's darker, um, it'll use those characteristics and it'll use that to find the nearest match in the corpus. So here I've loaded, um, I have a China symbol that I've made a library of, a couple hundred. So this is included in the, in the package as an example. Um, and I'll give it audio. So it'll find the nearest match and play that back. I can also kind of navigate them and that's kind of cool. And then there's other stuff that I can do here by chaining some of the objects together. So I have uh, the onset frame, I'm also analyzing mel bands, descriptors, um, and all sorts here. And I'm doing, in this case, applying loudness compensation and spectral compensation. So basically applying a real-time EQ, uh, corrective EQ per sample and also doing uh, real-time loudness compensation. So it's finding the nearest match in the corpus and then adjusting these things as well. So um, this is the version that's just vanilla, like playing back the nearest match and that's what you get. This is the same thing, but correcting for all these other things. So you tend to get a little bit more nuance, a little bit more detail, and you can adjust the amount of compensation you want to do. And finally, there's some visualization stuff here. So you have like, a, you know, the sensor percussion style display there. You also have um, these things that you can kind of navigate and view objects. There's also this, um, I'm going to improve these a little bit more because they look a little, a little dodgy here. Whoops. Point not found. Uh, uh, something's uh, funky and in one of these things here, but the idea is that you sort of get to visualize that stuff. So that's the kind of overview of the thing. As I said, some things are gonna change. Um, I have a few other objects I'm, I'm working on to let you do some bit more complicated things, but I think this is pretty comprehensive. You can do quite a lot with it. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Hopefully this should get you going.